this is Victor bringing here a new um, painting tutorial and this time we are going to paint this Ambot. We are going to paint him in yellow color, yellow armor like a heavy duty machine and I'm going to go for a finishing very similar to this one here. Okay, This is the other one that comes. So I will do one green and one yellow. So the one for this tutorial will be yellow. Okay, uh, We'll do some weathering and so on. So we are going to try to have a, a quite a nice detailed work. I uh, print it on white, you can print if you want on black, but know what I'm going to use, I'm going to use black templar and I'm going to paint with black templar all the parts that we want to be black or uh, metallic, okay, for example, I will go with black templar here inside of these cogwheels that are inside of the, the caparas. I will go uh, and yeah, and I do this because there are some parts that are quite difficult access. So we want to paint them on black, so they don't they are not visible later on. Okay, so I will do this on all the different parts. I will do as well the corrugate tubes, for example. I will do um, all the metallics here on the limbs. Uh, I have the limbs on the waist and and, and and so on. Okay, so I will do all this. Of course, the, this type of things that we have all around the, the board and so on. So I'm going to do all these parts with Black Templar and I'm back for the next step. Next step, I'm going to use Aberland Sunset. And I'm going to paint the different armor plates with Aberland Sunset. So I take a more precise brush in the case and we are going to apply Aberland Sunset. Uh, take it into account that it's quite an aqua yellow and it's quite a thick paint so thin it down if you want to if you th feel that it's too thick okay and we are going to try to do all the different parts with Avalanche Sunset okay so again here I don't have too much to explain just a layer of Avalon Sunset, that's all. Okay, next step, I'm going to use a silver color, uh, any metallic will work for that, to do all the metal parts. Okay, I'm using silver and I will weather it later on. I will apply it on all the parts where I think, where I have a cock wheels. Um, yeah mechanical parts, close, okay so I will apply all the parts where I want to have a metallic finishing, the hooks here, the, the jaws, okay I will apply the metallic. Okay, for example, the little jaws here. And here I will do just decide what you want to put in metal and what you prefer to leave it in black. Okay, you can leave parts in black and just put metal in some of the parts. Okay. At the end is up to everyone what you want to do metallic looking. So I will apply this and I'm back for the next step. This is how it looks like when we have applied this silver color, the metallic. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the metallic darker applying noon oil. This will create the shade and make the the metal look less shiny. We are going to apply it nicely over all the metal parts. Okay. I will try to be careful. Not too dirty in the yellow. Ok, 
Okay, but if there is an accident that you go a little bit over the yellow, just once it's dry, you clean it up. Okay, so I'm going to do this as you can see, like that, and I'm back once this is done. You can see there are parts that maybe it's difficult not to go over the yellow, especially when you want to go to these crevices. This is why I do this before doing any work on the, or any further work on the yellow. So I do that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, this hole looks like after doing the wash with the, the noon oil and now I'm going to do a second wash with seraphine sepia on yellow. Okay, this one is going to be a wash that I want to do not over all the yellow, we wanted to do it uh, quite precisely uh, with a precision, right? For example, what I mean is I go here on the on this line and I will try to apply it just there, okay? The wash will go directly into the crevice and you want to do the same on this part, okay? Like that, you want to do all this. Okay, I will do the shoulder pad so you can see how I do it. Okay, and then we are going to touch the different rivets. So in order that the wash will go around the rivets. Okay. You can see I go rivet, rivet, rivet. It can be a little bit time consuming. But it's going to be... Yeah, you don't want to dirt all the yellow, no? With seraphine sepia. I just want to do... Especially on the big plates, you don't want to put um, something sepia everywhere. Okay, the other option is to um, do the with uh, orange wash, but in that case I prefer to go for a, for the finishing I'm looking for, um, it's better that something sepia will do a better job. Okay, so I will be doing that, you can have seen here, I will be doing that on all the armor plates, all the yellow parts and I'm back once this is done. Okay, this hole looks like now that we have done the the marks and now I'm going to use a real yellow and I'm going to start doing some edge highlight and add bright brightness to the colors, okay? So we're going to go with a real yellow the yellow is this one, the one that is more orangey. Okay. And we are going to start highlighting the yellow. I also have flash with yellow, the lighter one, in case I need some additional some points that I, need, I want to make br even brighter okay what I'm going to do now with this all these highlights with the real yellow and the other thing I'm going to do I will do this later on when I do the weathering because you want to do scratches as well on the but this will come later, okay? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to edge highlight with ideal yellow on all the different edges that we have. But the other thing I want to do here is that here that we have this more rounded parts, here we need to work in a different way, right? We need to blend it. So I'm going to use ideal yellow and I will blend it with the Avalanche Sunset to make a brighter point like that, okay? 
no I take Avalon Sunset where's the, the color that I started using the base color and we work like that okay now we'll put a little bit of filial yellow again when you notice that you start removing the pelvis pain and leaving dry strokes stop applying more pain let it dry go to another part for example here and we do the edge highlight there we will touch when ok and we keep working on that And we can do some blending when you think that I'm going to remove the transitions. So I know what we'll do the for example here there the frame of this part and then I could do the frame We keep working like that. Okay. The intention now is to make the yellow brighter. And less and less awkward. The Avalon sunset is is a very awkwardish yellow. And I go back to this part that was painted before. I would insist making this. It's like making a reflection. I will take as well flesh with yellow. This even brighter. And now we just do the edge. As I said, what is the more interesting? The moment that will be interesting to put some flashy yellow to make the yellow brighter. Okay, 
So I will be doing all this on the miniature, all these highlights with yellow and I'm back. Okay, next step I'm going to use dark yellow and we are going to do a second highlight. This is much lighter one and this one I will apply it basically on rivets okay, and places where I want really a very bright highlight. Okay, we can put it. I will start with the rivets. Then, for example, here we can make like a brighter highlight. Although it's yellow, by contrast, will look almost white. So be careful how you apply it. Just to show, okay, then we will put it on different parts and as well on some of the corners. If you see that goes too bright, I will use a little bit of irial yellow to soften the transition. The intention is to apply this here and there in different spots. Okay, I will not do next to, so for example, here on this edge at the corner, can be an interesting place to put it, and in other places, right. Okay, so we'll keep doing that on different parts and I'm back when I'm done with that. Take a, into account that as we are going to, we do this before the weathering and later on we are going to do the weathering on, and we will more likely remove some of these highlights that we are doing now. But you want to do all the highlighting process before doing the weathering okay and then do the highlighting the weathering later okay so I'm working on that and I'm back for the next step okay once I have you can see the yellow nicely highlighted much brighter now I'm going to work a little bit on the black but I have and mini stratum grey on my palette and downstone okay so this is a mini stratum grey and this downstone I have these two colors and what we are going to do is we'll apply first especially I need to put some more water on this one okay there we go. I will start with downstone especially on this corrugate tubes we are going to highlight the rings so the like that and I will do as well edge highlight where there is uh, on this part black, there is not too much black to, to highlight to be fair but I will do on this part, ok so like that then we just use a little bit of 
the administratum on where we want additional highlight. I'm just mixing because was not so let me just go here. Black. And on the ropes, we're going to apply a little way like that. Okay, so I will do as well the back and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to start with the weathering and the weathering will have different parts. For example, on the black, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, okay, and we are going to make like if the paint have been scratch or damage. I'm going to make like a, a regular finishing on the some irregular finishing on, on the black part right, like that and then we're going to make like a scratch we use the Avalon sunset to do that okay and then we do I don't know you can do random damage here and there on the black bar okay so we are going to do like that you want to do thicker scratch where we are going to make later on the damage okay I will do especially here on this part I want to damage this part so I want to put some yellow there like if the paint have been chip okay we do that we can do the, the this rivet we can do some damage like that okay and then you again we keep making the the black line especially if you see that there is a mistake in your previous paint job it is not that regular we keep doing that so we can make like a line like that and make some points okay you, you write a random damage on the black parts with the yellow okay this is important we do that before starting the weathering with darker color here I want to maybe damage the corner Okay. Here we will just so you really want it to look. more damage will be on the corners so I'm doing like that okay this one I will not damage that much this one I will keep it like that so I will not make it that damage I think the shoulder pad should be 
last what I will just do is a couple of scratches okay I do first like that and here what I will already do I will come with the very dark brown and using Linux height sorry I went a little bit of camera it's the problem when I try to work with the base and then you can see I did this line there and then with the black not black it's a dark brown it's Reynolds height I go like that okay and I will take dawn yellow I wanted to put it especially on the yellow parts okay Okay, like that. And then again, we are going to damage more the the paint of the clothes. Okay, this is the part that we, are, we will expect a little more damage because you have all the you are um, digging with this. So you want to create like scratches. Okay, and then different type of damage. Can make another one for example that this is starting. Because also you have the cutting. We can make like for example some one that have one layer and impacted like that. And then you make the black paint. Because I'm imagining that the 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 the, the vehicle was painting in yellow and then the black lines put on top okay so you want to so you will have you you make a regular impacts here and there just to try to be as random as possible I know that this can be challenging sometimes to be random and I will do the other hand see what I'm just going to do is to clean up this part I don't know. okay so I will work the other hand apart. What I'm going to do now, the same we I will show you on the big ones. So here now I'm going to apply Reynolds height. Okay, and I leave it like that, and we are going to apply Reynolds height like that, for example. Especially on, on the corners. This is what I say that maybe you will damage. And here that we have done this scratch, what I will do is I will, this way you make this scratch like that because I will come with the brown inside like that. Okay, we are going to make here as well the dots we did and if you see that the, the the damage is not visible you take a little bit more yellow what I wanted to do is all, all this on camera and you do the damage around okay this is what I make the yellow scratch is quite big because I need to have a space to put the brown inside okay we are going 
to put some more damage in here and there. We also will do damage on the on the yellow part. We can make, for example, we can make this scratch longer. Go into the yellow. We can put here bigger damage. It all depends how much you want to weather all these parts. Okay, but remember where you're putting the weathering. I'm going to make this bigger. Okay, and now I'm going to put the brown in the middle. Okay. You want this damage to be bigger so you can really show how is that. And then, once we have done that, I will come back with Don yellow, I have it too liquid, so I want to put a little bit more. Don. I'm with Don yellow. You want to go next to the brown, especially where you have yellow or wrong. Like that. Okay. To show that the pain. This will give deepness to the damage and show that the paint has been scratched. It will make the optical effect. Okay. Now I'm imagining that underneath there is like a protective thing. Okay, so here what I'm going to do, I'm going to come with the dawn yellow and do like that. Okay, if the dawn yellow thing is too big, especially here next to the black, I come with black and I make it thinner where it's needed. Okay. Can also come with Avalon Sunset. Do like that. Okay. So I will keep working like that. All the damages is quite can be quite a work, but I like more this than just. I think it's looking better than just the uh, sponge weathering. Okay, you can do sponge weathering if you want, but with sponge weathering, you will not be able to do the 3D effect, right? You have to do it manually later on. So, this is what I will do now. I will keep working on all these damages. Okay. Try to give some dim three-dimensional effect on all of them, and I will be back once it has been done. I will not. You can see some of the damage I did on the black. I did not put. Um, I did not put any brown, right? Because not everything. Is cheap to the to underneath. I just chip the first layer of paint in some cases. Okay, so this is how I will work it. I will keep working all the robot like that, and I will show you how it looks like when you are done. Okay, this is how it looks like when well, we have I have done the weathering, the scratches all over the mech, all on the mech, the ambot. Sorry. Okay, so you can see damage on the top. I have not do. I don't want to do super heavy weathering, but you can see 
the hand has some weathering as well, some scratches here and there did some scratch there, another there and as well on the feet I did like small dots and small scratches okay. the parts that you think that can be scratched much easily now I'm going to work on the head a little bit and we are going to work on the visors so I'm going to do green visors or green uh, glowing on the, uh, on the on his type of um, eyes I'm going to use first mood green okay we're going to apply mood green and fill the full cavity with this. Okay, we want to give the sensation of green glowing. So in that case that we have a hole, we're going to fill the hole completely with this mood green. Okay, to give this sensation. We will need to wait that this device. I applied quite thin. Okay. Try to be quite thin, but you want to feel really the hole. And if you go a little bit off, it's not a problem because the dif the diffraction of the light will make the grid almost not visible. Okay. Like that. Let's wait that this dries before doing the further step. And while this is drying, I'm going to work on the on this thing and the light. And for the light and on the other part, so I'm going to use. I'm going to go for a bluish light. So I'm going to apply. I will do different steps. Okay. So for the light itself, okay, the light that we have at the right, I'm going to go blue. I will use Horror Blue first, this one. Let me just take. This one I was looking for. Okay. Take some paint. Okay. So let's put some light blue. And we are going to apply this. The light, don't worry about the grid. Just apply it all over all over the light first and we are going to work on the grid later on. Okay, just to be sure, maybe do two layers. If you see that it's not a very solid one. Okay. So I will wait that this device before doing a second layer on, on it. But while this is drying, we are going to work on the other part here. This thing. And we can make, I think at the end I will do a green, like, to follow the same chrome. So I'm going to use first Warstone Glow. Okay, it's quite a mid tone green. Show you this one, Warstone Glow. And then we are going to work with Mood Green and Caliban Green. So let's put Warstone Glow here first okay we are going to take now mood green the same we use for the eyes for the eyes for the visors on the face we're going to apply it like that. Do it a little bit more. Now we get Warstone Glow. Like 
like that. Now we will take a little bit of Kaliwan green. It's a very dark green. We are going to put it there. And now we are going to use this one. Okay, lime lime green from Winter Paint and this lime green will go here at the bottom like that, very little and we take white since the white is almost dry, I will take some water Refresh your white a little bit. Like that. Okay, and now we are going to use the same line by green we use for the bottom to make. some extra bright points inside Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to apply the second layer of oil blue there. And again, we will need to wait that it dries before doing the next step. So while I'm waiting for this drying, I'm going to work on these things that we have there here. I don't know what this rep is representing, but I'm going to apply a silver color there. Okay, like that. Okay, we're going to do all these things, objects. I don't know what this represents. Like with that. And as well, the other thing I will do now is I will clean up some of the metallic to make it look shiny in some parts that are more exposed, like here. For example, this one. I will not do all of them, just here and there. I will, especially on the mobile, on on the moving parts. Okay, and some parts you want to add a little bit to make the metallic pop up a little bit. I don't want to exaggerate neither because later on we are going to add some dirtiness. Okay, on some parts, and I'm going to simulate as well the grease that we put sometimes in the moving parts and on the stone cutters. We are going to add some dust and dirt. Okay, you can see I'm just touching here and there, different parts. Okay, so I will do this, I will do all this type of things that we have on the top and I'm back for the next step. Okay, I have worked on the metallics and now it's time to do second step on the light. So I'm going to use Aethermatic Blue. 
on a plane very yeah, not we, we remove a lot we apply very smoothly on the light like that and now we wait at this device as well while this is drying we can apply another contrast paint and this time it's going to be on the metallics I'm going to use Gorgunta and put it on this metal things that we just did okay I want them to look old And I'm imagining that this is like I don't know, but I, I think this color will match more with the rest of the paint job. If you want them even darker, you can go use Zyger Brown, but I think this color will be good enough. Okay. Like that. Okay. Good. No, I'm going to use another wash, but this time I'm going to use a gloss noon oil and I'm going to use this to simulate um, grease or any lubricant that is used on mobile parts for example I will apply it here it will give a little bit of shine if it is like if, if it wet with some type of grease I will look for the different mobile parts here I will apply it for example around okay so you will apply it I, we don't want to overdo with that I just go in places where I think it will make sense I will apply it here around this wheel this so sorry I will apply this well on this one here and this pass the mouth but especially where you want it is on here on where you have this joint on this joint here okay so you apply it here and there in the places that you think is making sense and I think it gives a very nice touch okay Especially these pistons, I will apply it on the middle of the piston. It looks like a hydraulic system. Okay. You can see. So I will keep doing that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to use black and I'm going to do the grid of the light
Okay. I think this is enough. I'm going to add some white no on the light. there if you have put a little bit too much we can always use Bahar blue and do a small correction Especially if the black was too much. Take off the white now. It's quite tricky this part. That should be okay. Good. And we are going to work here at the back. I was forgetting the these buttons. Here I was hesitating if I want to do like the other one. I did I mean I think I will leave the black buttons there. I think it makes more sense. And then what I will do I will add some highlight on these buttons But I will leave them in black, I think. So we'll do like that, and now we take black. Vertical turn to yellow. To do this, and as well, this side. And now I'm going to add, this will have to be the last step, some dirtiness. Okay, on the, on, especially on the cut, on, on the digging tools, okay, on these parts. So I have, I have here in the white palette some dust, some powder, so I'm going to add two powders, one is this one okay, grey ash very light one and I'm going to use as well a dark brown like this one okay this thing was let me check thing was dry mud okay but it's a light color and a, a very dark color I put them in the consistency 
of a wash so I put some water there I go for a bad brush that I have in yeah, I go for a consistency that is very very thin okay, let me move this here okay you can see it's very 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 thin and we are going to apply this and it, if I think that it's too thin you can apply a little bit you can take it from I already use it for the other one so this way I have it in, in this palette be careful because the, the these powders don't they need to be fixed later on okay so I will apply this all over the cutting tool Don't worry if you're is looking too heavy. Once it's dry, it was not going to look like that. Okay. Because I put a lot of water, so once it start drying, it will look more translucent. I don't, I'm not picking too much pigment. Okay. And if you put too much, remember that with water you can remove it quite easily. Okay. And I like to play with two colors. Okay, I'm going now I'm coming now with a darker one. Because yeah, you can imagine that there will be different type of mud mud on dirtiness, right? So I like to play with two different browns. We can apply a little bit on top of the yellow if you want. So you want this way you want to do this before after, uh, after the weathering. You want to do the weathering before, okay? Right here and there. And with that, we can put a little bit on the feet. This guy will go to mining parts, and then we'll get dirt. And you can also apply it if you want on the base. Okay, you can see I'm trying to work putting it intentionally in the areas where I want it, okay? You don't go over everything. I just go at the bottom. Now what I can do is apply the temple on the base a little bit here and there. It will dry, it will be very matte when it dries, okay? Looking very glossy now, but once it dries, it will be really matte looking. Okay, and be careful because I put it with water so it can be that it's sliding, it's flowing out of position. Try not to touch it with your fingers. I think I will leave it like that. Okay, we let it dry, and if you want to put more, you put more later on. But this is how it will finish. So, this is the full tutorial on how to paint the Ambot. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this one, um, and you have liked it. And here you have all the all the steps, different steps that I'm following to paint these Ambots. So I hope you have enjoyed this one, please give a like if you have liked it, let me know what do you think about the paint job, uh, if you like these miniatures or not, if you like what I done here, so any comment is welcome, uh, very appreciated and as usual thanks a lot for watching 
and see you later. Bye.